I'm upset. They closed down the drive-in in my hometown. And they didn't give anybody an explanation why. Maybe it's because they decided that they would make more money just by selling the property. Or maybe it's just because they didn't make enough money so they couldn't continue with our operations. Um, my whole community is upset. People that have visited my town are upset. Mostly because they shut it down and didn't give a reason as to why. But I have my theories. Enough with the dramatic acting. Let's build a diorama as to why they shut the drive-in theater down. I'm going to start this diorama off with these fancy little clipboards that I found for a buck at the dollar store. And all we have to do is uh, take this little clip off, apply a little bit of magic Mod Podge, and stick some styrofoam to it. This will be our base. This next part I'm going to be using this ready board that you can get at the Dollar Tree to build the structures with for the diorama. I'd like to thank Studson for reminding me about that. I had forgotten. This stuff is very easy to peel the paper off of and you get a tiny little slip of foam core within the center. I'm going to double up on these bad boys and give this screen a little bit of structure so it can stand on its own. Okay, let's face it, you can tell by the thumbnail that I didn't make two screens, but I did make the first screen, which is the main screen, and it has tin at the bottom of it. In order to make this, I just cut out a piece of corrugated cardboard, peeled off one layer of the paper, scratched off the excess, and glued it to the bottom. It makes for a pretty good looking tin. Maybe not exactly to scale, but it's good enough. It, you receive the image that I'm trying to throw into your mind, and that's all that matters, right? Then I used a wooden stir stick and an X-Acto knife to slightly score into the front of the foam and make it appear as though it is a bunch of giant boards tightly squeezed together to make one big white screen. I think I did a pretty good job. After that, it was to make all the structure on the back and I just began to throw sticks at it to make it look like the thing in real life. Part of replicating it is that uh, you just kind of get to try things out and that's the best part about any of this is just uh, replicating is hard but you just find what works and make it work um, don't judge me I'm not that great at English With the screen down, it's time to move on to the next building, which is the concession stand. It's also the building that the projector for screen one is in. This building had arcade cabinets in it, Mortal Kombat. It had pinball machines, uh, specifically a Terminator 2 one, which was awesome. It was always hot as hell in there, but it was one of my favorite places to go as soon as we got to the drive. And before the movie started, I'd always run in here. And so remaking this really brought back a lot of great memories. For this building, I'm going to use the same foam core that I did for the screen. And then I use a piece of plastic to cut out a window. Scratch it on both sides to reduce visibility into the diorama. And then use a piece of paper, fold it up many times to make uh, the dirty ass blinds on the inside.
With the concessions building done, it's time to move on to building number two, which is one of the cooler parts of architecture in my hometown. Uh, this is the ticket booth when you first pull into the drive-in. I used foam core to build the walls of this building and then used a piece of plastic, scored two sides and then folded on the score to make the big window for the ticket booth. And a clay sculpting tool to mar in all the lines and details on all the walls. I then had to use these wooden dowel sticks to make the structure which makes this building so funky and in cutting those um, you have to be careful with these out there crafters because they'll just launch in any direction and if it can stick in plywood it can stick into your skin and especially your eyeball so just be careful out there. Once the ticket booth was complete, I decided to challenge myself in making the road sign that sticks out by the highway. This was a really fun build and I used styrene, which is one of my favorite building materials, to build it out of. And unfortunately, my big bogus head was in the way of the camera the whole time, so you don't get to see any of that. I'm sorry. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, I do suppose. I really am sorry though, honestly. It disgusts me that I don't look at the camera more often when I am filming to see what is actually in screen. I guess that's why my videos are just mediocre and not top notch. Like um, that British guy over there on the other side of the pond. And filming isn't the only thing I'm mediocre at. Obviously nothing I built fit on the terrain I built prior to building the terrain. So yeah, I'm mediocre at scale too, but uh, thanks. Um, to the foam gods for delivering us the XPS foam. It uh, came in to save the day, and we'll just start with a new train. And that's what I get for trying something different. See, this placement works so much better, and XPS foam is just so much bigger than a clipboard, and uh, I don't even know why I try, you know? The last thing to build was the inevitable shutdown of the drive in theater, which is this UFO. I then use these two little UFO halves that come in this pack called wine glasses. Anyways, you just cut the top of them off, give them the old chop, and glue them together. A little bit of sanding to make sure that the glue sticks. A bottle cap at the very top to identify it as a UFO and not just some weird frisbee. A little bit of sequins out of my bit box and the UFO was done. Okay, one last layout before I decided to cut into the terrain. I used a sharpie to lay out where all the buildings are going to be, the roads, and the hills. After that, I used a utility knife to cut out where the UFO crashed at, make a crater for it, and a little bit more of the foam core to make berms where the vehicles park. I decided it would be easier and also more complicated if I painted all my buildings and structures and placed them before I base my terrain. I stir up a mixture of Mod Podge, white paint, and Vallejo dark gray to make a base primer for all the buildings. Mod Podge makes for a really good base coat. It seals the foam, it makes the foam less porous and allows the paint to spread over it a lot better without soaking in. I also just add the gray or any kind of color to let myself know where I've painted because if not I'll forget and I'll paint the same area like 16 times so that's the only reason that it's gray. No particular reason anyways.
With all the painting and the dry brushing out of the way, it's time to wash all these props and give them 54 years worth of weathering. For this I use an acrylic wash, it's black acrylic paint and water. And I try to make like a 4 to 1 ratio, that way it's not overbearing, but um, sometimes it is. It's okay. If that happens to you, just take your paper towel and wipe away what you don't want. Leave what you do. A few passes of this and you can add years to something that's brand new. With everything permanently put in place, it's time to base the terrain. I like to use tile mortar. I try to mix it a 3 to 1 ratio. 3 parts mud to 1 part water. Mix it up until it looks like hot peanut butter and then spread it all over the terrain. I always like using mortar to base my terrains more than anything I've done so far. It seems like the mortar gives a gritty, sandy texture to any surface I'm working on. And it also sticks to the foam really well, which is nice because then you don't have to worry about it falling off. Eight hours later, after the mortar had completely cured, I went back through with another round of Mod Podge mixed with some dark brown and black paint and sealed all the terrain. After I got that initial coat down, I began to paint the terrain with a dark brown to simulate mud and then bringing out lighter tones of brown to act as dried mud. I mean, pretty simple, you know. Different tones of mud makes the terrain look a lot better, more realistic. Once the terrain paint had finally dried, I went on to my favorite part of any diorama, which is adding flocking. There's this really weird thing that every time I would go to 27 Twin Driving when I was a kid, and even as an adult, there'd be parts of the movie late at night when I look up into the sky and see a shooting star. I'd always hope that it was a UFO or aliens, or that some visitor would come and I could see them flying, zipping across the stars as I watched a movie. Now, this might correlate to watching Men in Black there, or, you know, Signs, or a whole bunch of other movies that may influence those thoughts, but, however, that's the memory and the aspirations that'll live on in this diorama for the rest of its life. And that's going to wrap us up for today, folks. If you haven't yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. It'll notify you when I upload a video. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching. And to all my new subscribers, welcome to the channel. I hope you all have a great week and an even better day. And we'll see you all on the other end of the trail.